Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I think I don't know whether it is by design or by coincidence that I always get time to speak after lunch and before tea. And I always say that you can commit two sins in India, being you become the eldest son in the middle class family, so you face a lot of challenges in life, or you become a speaker in the afternoon. Unfortunately, I have committed both. And it is, I was not supposed to speak here. It is my boss who was supposed to come and speak to you, and he would have really loved to do that. But I think uh, appointment of ministers cannot be changed, which are given at a short notice. But the appointment of subordinates can be changed. So he asked me that, can you do this for me? And I said, yes, I will try. I can assure you, I can't match his style, his mannerism, his diction, his fluency. The way I can do, I will try my best. Well, I have been in the industry for 40 years. I started my career after my post-graduation from technology as a teacher, then left after one year. Not that because I didn't like it. Circumstances forced me to come out from there. Uh, first of all, my, I must say I was very impressed the way I walked through this area. And it's a fabulous institute. And uh, I just mentioned that if I was I get an opportunity to be reborn and get to that stage that I have to study, I will try and come here back. The second part is that they must be churning out very good managers because you can't expect a teacher to delegate it so fast and so well. So you must be, managers must be developing who can who know how to delegate and give the authority of, to the people. You could and it was very well exemplified by Milind by saying the speaker will themselves introduced. Well done. Thank you. Well, I will take this topic on the custom manufacturing in India, and I am restricting myself to the pharmaceutical mainly, because that is where I spend time. I don't know the other industry very well, so I won't be able to do justice there. Well, it's, it's a fact. And I back to differ a little bit in saying that India is becoming a preferred destination for outsourcing across the value chain, be it finance, accounting, HR services, marketing, sales, R&D, product design, operations, and technology services. And there are many examples that you can talk from here. Uh, but I think I will take you more to the pharmaceutical than to the. The other good news is that India is on a path of value addition and now from components to the cars and you know leather to shoes all that started happening apparels from cloth uh, viscose fibers and all that uh, that's happening and i think it will continue to happen that's a good news for all of us uh, and that is the reason that the outsourcing of india is, is created a surge in exports which is exemplified from that we grew from 17% to 21% GDP, where GDP also has grown during this period by 7%. So if you take the growth in absolute term, it's quite high. And in rupee term also, it is shown that it is almost 50% of the what it was. Well, if this is the scenario in the outsourcing of all the industry, pharmacos cannot be an exception. Now, in pharmaceutical industry, there are two core competencies that are there. One is the research side and the other is the marketing and sales. The manufacturing, according to them, and this is I'm saying on the basis of the interviews we carried out with many CEOs, is incidental. Incidental because they've thought that they, don't, they can't get it manufactured outside when they designed the product, so they designed the plant to suit it. And that is where the manufacturing came into existence. If they want to protect their immediate future, immediate present, the near future, then they have to concentrate on brand building, which is the core competence they have to work for. And if they have to protect their mid-term and the long-term future, it is to R&D. So that is where they think that their focus should be, and not to spend time now in future in the manufacturing. It will take, I'm not saying that it is across the board, it's going to take place overnight. It will take a number of years, but it is, the ball has set in. The, there are price pressures. 
for manufacturing to be outsourced. And you can imagine the price pressure that 5% of population is paying 40% of the pharma bill. How long they can continue to do it? How, how long uh, public will not say it's not good? So in any case, there are pressures to reduce cost. There, there are pressures because they have products in some companies which are lined, which have got, uh, which can give them higher revenues, but they don't have the asset to produce. If they have to outsource it, whether they have to outsource from somewhere in USA, Europe, or India, or China. They also want to free their own capacities. And the other part was, which was very surprising to me was uh, the regulatory hassles. When uh, I was involved in doing this strategy for the company, and uh, I did interview along with uh, McKinsey with me, uh, many CEOs in the USA and Europe, and they said that we, you don't mind anything happening, but the letter from FDA on our table really sent jitters to me. I cannot stand that, and that is why if somebody can do it better for me, I would rather give it to somebody else. Let us say, what is the market scenario? The manufacturing comes out about 50 billion. Out of that 50 billion dollar, the outsourcing uh, is done to the extent of 30 percent, which is about 15 billion. Out of that 15 billion, 10 billion is for the API and intermediates, and 5 billion is the doses forms. So, if you see that outsourcing of the formulation, which is which you see on this chart, can I have this? Pointer. On the side, if you see it, 15 percent, that means it gives you a lot of opportunity. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. This gives you a lot of opportunity that there is a lot, lot of space available for doing custom manufacturing. Now, when we, this is the McKinsey uh, study which carried out, we said that the 15 billion today will grow to 27 billion. Now, if that is the market that is available, and that is a 2010, you go to another five years, and the picture will be much, much different. Bulk manufacturing our volumes are already shifting to India. It's rapidly, if you see the rest of the world had a growth of 33%, India showed a growth of 66%. That means two-thirds of the bulk manufacturing growth came from India, and only one-third came from the rest of the world. Now, if this is the scenario that India is, is, is the opportunity available, can Indian manufacturer take advantage of that? And so we did study of saying that what has been the investment of in the Indian industry on creating the world-class facilities. And as you see, over a period of time, it is growing. And I think in the last few years, from 2002 to 2005, it has taken further momentum. India has the distinction of the largest number of USA FDA approved plant. As you must have seen, I have given it is 61 outside USA. No other country can boast to have so many plants. And in India, when I say plant, if it is because the two-third comes from the API, uh, there are companies which have got facility as one plant where they have six, five, six plants. In our own case in Hyderabad that we have a facility, we have a facility approval, and in that facility we have got five plants. So it is the product. And if each plant can produce three products, we have approval for 15 products. So it is not one plant, it is a facility. So if you take number of plants, it will be much more than what you will see of this. The reason being uh, the uh, strong QA and regulatory capability that Indian, uh, Indians have built. Uh, the, you have come to a stage that when I was talking to somebody, when I was audited, our plant was audited, I got a chance to talk to him and he said that, I think we are spending too much of time and money in coming to India. The number of audit that we have to carry out in India, it's better to start, why don't we start having an office here? And USFDA is contemplating to start an office here. Probably it will be location maybe Hyderabad or Mumbai. With the 26th, what happened in Mumbai, I think the choice will be more towards Hyderabad. Even if you see DMO filings, I think DMO filings from India is, is probably highest after uh, all countries except USA where it has been 165 as against 129 India needed. So if you see all this, what it regulates, it says that there is an opportunity, there is a creation of facility. Are we building the 
scientist pool, are we building the skills? That is another aspect of doing this outsourcing business. If you see number of people that come out from the, and I heard somebody saying uh, in, the after, in the morning when I came just before lunch that there is, there is a disconnect between the industry and the educational edu institution, and that is not because the industry Industry has always welcomed anybody coming and uh, coming and learning from them, but the opportunity, why it has not taken place is very difficult for me to attend because I was in the academics and I worked in the industry. Even with a lot of uh, persuasion that I make to my own alma mater in saying that, can you please send three, four candidates to do their training part in our, con in our company? They say it's too far, they cannot come. From Varanasi to Hyderabad, it's too far for them to come. So there are some disconnects which have to be looked into, and I think the, the technical education has caught up, but in certain areas, I think we have, we have lagged behind. But whatever is the shortcomings in the education is, is, I think, made up by the industry when the people join them, they are trained and well-trained. Because I think when we take the people, we have a program for them to run for one to two years as a trainee, and in two years, they go through many uh, curriculums, like what should have been done by the academics. If you see the cost, cost of skilled chemist in uh, India is uh, little higher than China. But when I come to the comparison of India and China, I will show what does it mean, actually. And the cost of development of DMF is only 26% what it is in USA. This is the production cost that is uh, not done by me. This is done by a consultant firm. And we say that uh, India would be 30 to 35 percent cheaper than only in this aspect of cost. If the India can generate power at lower cost than what is being generated in the USA, then probably India will have an advantage of 45 to 50 percent. And that 50 percent, I'm not talking of the innovation. I'm not talking of the raw material cost, which comes down when you shift your manufacturing base from the west to east. Where India offers advantage which goes beyond the labor outreach. I think uh, we have capital efficiencies. If you build a US FDA approval plant anywhere in the world except in India, or maybe in China, that you spend only 40 to 45 percent of the capital there. Because you get a lot many equipment which are manufactured in India, which are as good as are being manufactured anywhere else. We don't need so much of automation in plants. We have a social obligation. The obligation is those places where we don't need automation, which are not proving benefit to the product or the quality of the product, there's no need to have automation. It's better to have manual operations. Process engineering, we have been going through a, a, in an Indian competitive environment where I think the prices, I think USA has seen the fall of prices of ciprofloxacin to 95% in uh, five days' time or six days' time. India has been seeing this over the last five to seven years. When you launch a product, you can launch it at 50 rupees. By the time the three months gets over, uh, the prices have fallen already in the market to 10 rupees. So Indians have seen that this is happening, and so that they keep on re-engineering, they keep on doing innovation in the processes to reduce the cost. They're not doing out of uh, pocket. They're doing it after reducing the cost and seeing that the cost reduction takes place in every sphere. We are highly qualified people, yes. We have those, those know how to uh, deal with the regulated markets. We have a lot of chemistry skills. I think the chemistry skills that I saw in Belgium uh, and Germany, next to that is the chemistry skill I have seen that exists only in India. And that is recognized by all and sundry because this is not what I am saying on the basis of my feeling, but it is on the basis of the interview that we had done with the companies abroad. Labor costs, yes, labor costs are low, but over a period of time, if you take 10, 20 years, we will catch up with the cost, but that will not be as much as what is being spent as a percentage to the manufacturing cost. Well, I am coming to the life cycle of the molecule, if you see the left side that start from the custom, you do the custom chemical synthesis here, 
where the molecule is formed, the product is identified, but it is not proved that it's going to be successful. But once it's successful, then there are small pieces of this which are given as custom chemical synthesis to people. And then the, this, the, the puzzle, puzzle is solved, and one molecule is formed. And then after clinical trials, when it is launched, goes to the patent. And when the patent it comes to maturity, and then it becomes off patent. When it comes to off patent, there are there are various options available here. The two options which are available, as I say, are the strategy of confrontation, strategy of uh, collaboration, and strategy of R&D, which is mutually not. Uh, it is mutually exclusive, not inclusive. So what happens is you cannot follow the two paths, you cannot be having a strategy of confrontation and you cannot, cannot have the strategy of collaboration. You cannot tell, you cannot tell your partner that I'll be uh, your enemy in your country, but I'll be your partner in other countries. I think that doesn't work. So what happens is people have to decide their own strategy at a particular time. And once you have taken the strategy to change from there, it becomes a difficult task. Uh, we in Nicholas have taken a, a stand that we will not be competing with our partners. The reasons being that we have grown in India in the domestic market by acquisition of multinationals. And our growth at, uh, I think, uh, acquisition of by Piramal of Nicholas took place when they made first time entry in the pharmaceutical in 1988, when our turnover was only 16 crores. We are 2005, I think we'll be ending this year sometime, somewhere around 1,500 to 1,600 crores from this business only. We are not taking the businesses which are the allied businesses, which are joint venture partner businesses in the same field of pharmaceuticals. Since we have grown by strategy of collaboration, we thought that that will be the strategy that we should follow even in the international market. And for doing that, we said that, can we do the custom manufacturing rather than doing the generic business? So we said that we will stay away from the generic market and we will not get into this. 